Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes. The US can copy China's playbook on EV tech. China startup aims to close gap with SpaceX in reusable rockets. China's penny-pinching companies are dealing a blow to growth. Dial it up to category 6? As warming stokes storms, some want a bigger hurricane category. Tuesday briefing, Blinken's high-stakes Middle East trip. The US can copy China's playbook on EV tech. Bloomberg. U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo should negotiate a quid pro quo with Chinese electric vehicle, EV, companies instead of imposing hard barriers, according to an opinion piece in Bloomberg. The U.S. could require Chinese companies to enter into joint ventures with American partners in order to sell EVs in the U.S. market. This would allow the U.S. to tap into China's advanced EV and battery technologies while also addressing security concerns. The article also suggests that the U.S. could reduce its dependence on China by developing its own supplies of key minerals used in EV batteries. China startup aims to close gap with SpaceX in reusable rockets. Bloomberg. Chinese startup Orion Space is aiming to develop its reusable rocket, the Gravity 2, by late 2025 or early 2026, according to co-founder Yao Song. The company conducted its first single-use rocket launch last month. The reusable rockets are expected to lower costs and boost launch frequency. Orion Space has three to five launches planned for 2025 and five to eight for 2026, with the aim of reaching 10 launches a year in three years' time. The company recently completed a Series B funding round of 600 million Chinese yuan, $86 million, and has a post-financing valuation of 6 billion Chinese yuan. China's penny-pinching companies are dealing a blow to growth. Bloomberg. Chinese companies are cutting back on corporate spending as the country's economic slowdown deepens. Businesses spent 7 trillion Chinese yuan, $975 billion, last year, 3% less than in 2019, according to iResearch. The cutbacks come as the government warns against hedonistic lifestyles and as falling prices hit corporate income and hamper demand. Hotel chains and airlines are among the hardest-hit firms. Dial it up to Category 6? As warming stokes storms, some want a bigger hurricane category. Associated Press. Climate scientists are proposing a new category of hurricane to account for increasingly powerful storms, which they say are becoming more intense due to climate change. A Monday study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences argues that the Saffir-Simpson scale, which has been in use for over 50 years, does not adequately convey the dangers posed by the most powerful storms. The study's authors suggest the creation of a Category 6 for storms with winds exceeding 192 miles per hour, as the current Category 5 is capped at 157 miles per hour. The authors of the study also argue that the traditional scale is based on wind speed, whereas water is the deadliest aspect of hurricanes. Several experts have dismissed the idea of a new category, arguing that it could mislead the public by focusing on wind speed rather than the most dangerous element of hurricanes. However, other scientists argue that a Category 6 is necessary, given the increasing intensity of the most powerful storms. Tuesday Briefing, Blinken's High Stakes Middle East Trip. New York Times. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has arrived in Saudi Arabia as part of his visit to the Middle East. His main objectives are to prevent the Israel-Hamas conflict from escalating into a regional war and to rally allies around a proposal to release hostages in Gaza. The proposed agreement would see Hamas return over 100 Israeli hostages in exchange for a pause in fighting and the release of Palestinians in Israeli jails. Additionally, the Biden administration is pursuing retaliatory strikes against Iran-backed militias that have targeted U.S. troops. Blinken aims to reassure U.S. allies that these strikes do not signify an escalation of the conflict in the Middle East. CVS Health says it is selling all 22 of its retail drugstores in Puerto Rico. Associated Press. CVS Health has announced that it will sell its retail drugstores in Puerto Rico to Caribe Pharmacy Holdings. The deal will involve 22 pharmacies and is expected to be completed in April. The buyer plans to continue all operations and retain all employees. CVS Health did not disclose the financial details of the transaction. The decision to sell the pharmacies in Puerto Rico was based on various factors, including local market dynamics and population shifts. CVS Health will continue to operate its specialty pharmacy location on the island, with another one under construction. In November 2021, CVS Health announced plans to close hundreds of stores over the next three years. Justice Department proposes major changes to address disparities in state crime victim funds. Associated Press. 
The Justice Department has proposed changes to rules governing state-run programs that provide financial assistance to violent crime victims in order to address racial disparities and reduce the number of subjective denials of compensation. The proposal would bar states from considering a victim's criminal history and eliminate some of the most subjective reasons for denials. Last year, an Associated Press investigation found that black victims were disproportionately denied compensation in many states for subjective reasons rooted in implicit biases. The proposed changes would limit when a state program can deny a person for misconduct and clarify that state programs should not claw back money received from crowdfunding sources. The proposal is open for a 60-day public comment period. Air products and chemical stock drops on Q1 earnings miss. Yahoo! Air products and chemicals, EPD reported disappointing fiscal first-quarter earnings results and reduced its 2024 outlook, causing shares to fall sharply. The company missed expectations on both revenue and adjusted EPS, citing a manufacturing slowdown in China as a key factor behind the weak quarterly performance. Hey there, folks! It's your friendly neighborhood Dr. Six here, bringing you the latest news from the Six Degrees world. I hope you're all doing well and staying curious. Now, let's dive into today's headlines. First up, we have an interesting suggestion from Bloomberg. They propose that the US should take a page out of China's playbook when it comes to electric vehicle, EV, technology. Instead of imposing hard barriers, they suggest that the US should negotiate with Chinese EV companies and require them to enter into joint ventures with American partners. This would allow the US to benefit from China's advanced EV technology while also addressing security concerns. Plus, it could help the U.S. develop its own supplies of key minerals used in EV batteries. Talk about a win-win. Next, we have news from the space race. Chinese startup Orient Space is aiming to close the gap with SpaceX by developing its own reusable rocket, the Gravity 2. They plan to have it ready by late 2025 or early 2026. With reusable rockets, launch costs can be significantly reduced, leading to more frequent launches. Orion Space has big plans, with three to five launches scheduled for 2025 and five to eight for 2026. They're aiming for 10 launches a year in just three years' time. That's some serious ambition. In other news, it seems that Chinese companies are tightening their belts as the country's economic slowdown continues. Corporate spending decreased by 3% last year, as falling prices and government warnings against excessive lifestyles took their toll. Even hotel chains and airlines are feeling the pinch. Looks like it's time to cut back on the caviar and champagne, folks. Now, let's talk hurricanes. Climate scientists are proposing a new category, Category 6, to account for the increasingly powerful storms we're seeing due to climate change. They argue that the current Saffir-Simpson scale doesn't adequately convey the dangers posed by these storms. The proposed Category 6 would include storms with winds exceeding 192 miles per hour. Some experts argue that this could mislead the public by focusing on wind speed rather than the most dangerous aspect of hurricanes, which is water. It's a debate that's sure to stir up some strong winds of its own. Moving on to international affairs, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in the Middle East on a high-stakes trip. His objectives include preventing the Israel-Hamas conflict from escalating into a regional war and rallying allies around a proposal to release hostages in Gaza. Additionally, the Biden administration is considering retaliatory strikes against Iran-backed militias that have targeted U.S. troops. Blinken's mission is to reassure U.S. allies that these strikes don't signify an escalation of the conflict. Talk about a diplomatic tightrope. In business news, CVS Health is selling all 22 of its retail drugstores in Puerto Rico to Caribe Pharmacy Holdings. The deal is expected to be completed in April, and Caribe Pharmacy Holdings plans to continue operations and retain all employees. CVS Health made this decision based on various factors, including local market dynamics and population shifts. They will still operate their specialty pharmacy location on the island. Looks like there's a new player in town. Lastly, we have some disappointing news for air products and chemicals. The company reported weak fiscal first quarter earnings and reduced its 2024 outlook. They attributed this to a manufacturing slowdown in China. It seems like China's slowdown is having ripple effects across industries. Hang in there, air products and chemicals. And that's a wrap for today's news, folks. Remember, knowledge is power, so keep seeking out those six degrees of information. Now, it's time for your thoughts. What do you make of the US potentially copying China's EV playbook? Are you on board with the proposal for a Category 6 hurricane? Share your ideas and let's get the discussion going. Until next time, stay curious, my friends. Thank you for tuning in.
The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.